Hey there, it's Shannon Magic Myers, and we'll be doing a little warm up here before our integration by parts lecture. So it'll be a little bit of a bumpy ride with integration by parts, but I think you'll learn to appreciate it just like I have. All right, you got this. So we want to warm up by differentiating with respect to the independent variables. So I'll go ahead, the first one, we'll differentiate with respect to x and the derivative with respect to x of f at x is f prime at x. Now we have a function of x inside the arc sign, so we have to take the derivative of 5x, which is 5, over the square root of 1 minus 25x squared, because you're squaring 5x when you're applying that formula, all right? And we are done. How are we doing? Is it coming back to you? <laughs> all right, same thing here. We've got a function of x as our independent variable. And so you can keep this as dy dx, or you could call it y prime if you'd rather. And let's see. The natural log formula for derivatives will be u prime over u, so our u is 5x plus 1, so we get 5 in the numerator. I must have really been digging 5 when I was writing this, huh? <laughs> and it's over 5x plus 1, and we're all set. Awesome sauce, how you doing? You are welcome to pause the video and do all of these on your own if you'd rather, and then you can check and make sure that you were right and that I was right. <laughs> All right, so this one we're going to differentiate with respect to theta. That is our independent variable. So we will have r prime at theta is equal to, so it's the derivative of that tangent function. Awesome, you got it, we get r secant squared at theta. Cool, cool? All right, so now switching over to integration. For integration, I want you to keep in mind this formula. It's kind of a pattern recognition technique. If you're integrating some function f, which has a function of x inside of it, that function of x, of that inside part of the composition, is, is g of x, and if you have the derivative of that function of x times the whole thing and your dx, what you get out is capital F at g at x plus c. In the techniques of integration chapter, we're going to be doing a lot of different techniques and you don't want to have to make u substitutions all the time if you can help it. So if I was doing a u substitution for this first one, I would let u equal our tangent at x and do you see that we have its derivative available? So. I'll write this as the integral of arc tangent at x times dx over x squared plus 1. So do you see that would be my whole du? And so I have everything I need for the derivative portion of the inner function. And so, coming back, that will give us the arc tangent function at x squared multiplied by 1 half plus our constant of integration. How are we doing? Good, good? Excellent. All right. Next up, we have the quantity natural log at x 
cubed over x. Now, since you've got parentheses around that natural log at x, that means it's the whole function being cubed. So you can't use any properties of x. So let's also rewrite this one as natural log at x, the quantity cubed. And then do you see we could write it as times dx over x. What's the derivative of the natural log at x function? Beautiful, one over x. So you have everything you need to integrate, right? So again, using the power rule, we'll have one fourth quantity natural log at x to the fourth power plus c, and we're done. Excellent. Now this one I will do an official u substitution, and I'm going to simplify it just because I, we will do this problem later on using integration by parts. So, uh, and then I'm going to show you that you get the same thing. So here we go. If I do a little side work here, my u would equal to 5 minus x, du would be negative dx. And then I see that I have that extra x hanging around. So I'm going to write in here that x is equal to 5 minus u. So I know this seems kind of circular in nature, but what's happening here is that we're going to take the binomial and make it so it's raised to the one power instead of the one half power. So this is going to end up being the integral of, I've got 5 minus u, that quantity, times u to the one half power. So my u was the 5 minus x, and then my x was 5 minus u. I need a negative dx. Are we good with that? So I'm going to put a negative out here to balance out the negative dx that I'm going to use. Groovy? All right. So then we will have this will be equal to negative integral quantity 5u to the 1 half minus u to the 3 halves du. So again, my du is that negative dx. All right, so we will end up with negative 5 times two-thirds u to the three-halves, just using that power rule, and then I'm going to distribute the minus. Minus a minus is plus two-fifths u to the five-halves, plus our constant of integration. I know that if we were doing a differential equations problem, that might have affected our constant, not really, so just don't worry about the negative going to the constant. And then this will be negative 10 thirds u to the 3 halves plus 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus our constant of integration. Now I'm going to do a little exercise because I want to um, show you later how we're going to be able to do this using integration by parts and we'll get the same result. So, sorry, that one just needs a 3 over 3. And we will go ahead and factor out 2 out of each of them. So we'll have 2u to the 3 halves over 15 is going to be factored out and we'll be left with negative 25 
for the first term, and then plus 3u to the 2 over 2, which is just 1. And then back substituting the 5 minus x, we will have 2 times 5 minus x raised to the 3 halves over 15 times negative 25 plus 3 times 5 minus x. So the u was 5 minus x. And we back substituted. All right, and then we will get 2 times 5 minus x to the 3 halves over 15. This is going to be negative 25 plus 15 minus 3x, which will be 2 times 5 minus x to the 3 halves over 15 times negative 10 minus 3x. I'll go ahead and factor out a negative to the front and that will be negative 2 times 5 minus x, that quantity to the 3 halves, and then we'll have 10 plus 3x all over 15. And then we'll add in our, sorry, constant of integration. Okay, don't worry, we don't have to do this with all integrals. We don't have to simplify them, but it'll be interesting to look back and see how it compares. Cool? All right, so now we'll evaluate the definite integral. So here, what I'm noticing is the secant squared function is the derivative of the tangent function. So sometimes I even kind of start a u sub until I see what it would be. So if u was tangent at 6 theta, my du would be 6 times secant squared at 6 theta d theta. And I have that except for the 6, don't I? So if I multiply um, on the inside by 6 and then divide by 6 on the outside, so this will be 1, 6. Using that general power rule, we'll have one third tangent cubed at 6 theta. And then that's going from theta is 0 to theta is pi over 8. So that'll give us 1 18th. And then we'll have our tangent function cubed and then we'll have 6 times pi over 8 for the upper limit of integration minus 6 times 0 inside for the angle for the lower limit of integration. Good so far? Awesome. So this is going to give us 1 18th tangent of 3 pi over 4, the quantity cubed, minus tangent of 0, the quantity cubed, which will be tangent at 3 pi over 4 is going to be 1. So 1 cubed is 1. So we'll have 1 18th times 1 minus tangent at 0 is 0, and 0 cubed is 0. 
So that'll just give us 1 18th and we're done. Good so far? Integration by parts, I usually say IBP, is based on the formula for the derivative of a product and is useful for integrals involving products of algebraic and transcendental functions. Doesn't have to just be those, but it can be very useful for those. Consider the following product of two functions of x that have continuous derivatives. So, this is, the functions are u equals f at x and v is equal to some g at x. So if I multiply u and v together and I want to consider what is this derivative, the derivative with respect to x, well, I would get, so notice that I'm starting to equate this product to some other set of terms, not set of terms, but I'm equating this product to something else. So the first times the derivative of the second, so that would be d dx of v, right, plus d dx of u times v. Now, dx is just a small change in x, so you can almost think about it as multiplying it out, clearing it out, and then we're left with these differentials. Okay, so now we have duv is equal to u dv plus v du. Now integrating both sides, we'll just get uv on the left side, and then we can split this integral into the sum of two integrals. And so what will happen is if we isolate u dv, we'll end up with u times v minus the integral of v du. And that, my friends, is the formula for integration by parts. So going into our theorem, if u and v are functions of x and have continuous derivatives, then the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. This technique can turn a super complicated integral into simpler, simpler tasks, I guess I should say. You'll end up with a simpler, I shouldn't say simpler ones, into simpler processes maybe. The trick is to choose your function u so that du dx is simpler than u most of the time. Oh yeah, and practice a bunch <laughs> of problems, all right? There's no like just easy pat way to do this. You have to really, really practice, all right? So these this first part is kind of like the supposed easy integration by parts problems because if you have a logarithmic or an inverse trigonometric formula, some transcendental factor, or not formula, a logarithmic uh, factor or an inverse trigonometric factor, then they don't have basic integration formulas, right? 
until our logarithmic and our inverse trigonometric, inverse trig, these guys or gals or theys are considered to be transcendental. And um, so if they don't have a basic integration formula, you have to have them be your you. So here we go. <clears throat> Let's do this. We have 4x squared times natural log at x dx. So when I see that, I'm very happy because I can go over here and say u is natural log at x and du is equal to 1 over x dx. So I've taken care of part of the factors in the problem here. Now, v, you always will say dv is equal to something times dx. Well, what's left? 4x squared times dx. dx is always there or whatever the independent variable is. It doesn't just go away. And then we integrate both sides. We get v is equal to 4 thirds x cubed. We don't have to worry about the constant of integration. Now, plugging this back in, or not plugging it in, I like to rewrite the definite, or the, uh, the integral, original integral, because there's some problems where we're going to want to combine like integrals. So, this integral that we started with is equal to u times v, so natural log at x times v, which was 4 thirds x cubed, minus the integral of v, du, which was, so this was our v, and then our du was 1 over x dx. So I'll also highlight that one. All right, so now our integral of 4x squared natural log at x dx equals, I'll write this a little nicer, we'll have 4 thirds times x natural log at x. And then we can simplify a bit, right? We can certainly take out the 4 thirds and then we've got just an x squared dx remaining. All right, continuing. This will be 4 thirds x times natural log x minus 4 thirds times 1 third x cubed plus our constant of integration. And so we'll get 4x squared times natural log at x dx equals. So we'll have 4 thirds x times natural log x minus 4 ninths x cubed plus our constant of integration. We're good to go. Cool, cool? All right, our next one is the integral of arc sine at x dx. And so at some point you will kind of celebrate a little bit because the only possible thing you can pick for you is arc sine at x because it doesn't have a basic integration formula. So our du will end up being dx over the square root of one minus x squared. And then the only thing left is the dx. And then, so dv is dx, and when you integrate both sides, we get v is equal to x. So the integral of arc sine at x dx equals u 
which was arc sine at x times v, which was x, minus the integral of v, which was x, times du, which was dx over root 1 minus x squared. All right, so the integral of arc sine at x dx equals, I'll pretty this up a little, x times arc sine at x minus the integral of x times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half dx. Now, my g is 1 minus x squared, so my g prime would be negative 2x, right? So I have the x, but I need my negative 2. To balance, I'll be uh, flipping the sign and then multiplying by a half. If you need to do a u substitution, that's fine, but I wouldn't call it u. I would call it maybe t or something different. All right, so the integral of arc sine at x dx equals x times arc sine at x plus one half times the quantity one minus x squared to the positive one half. So that'll mean that I'll be multiplying that by two because I would have been dividing by one half plus our constant of integration. And then, let's see what we get. We'll have the integral of arc sine at x dx equals x times arc sine at x plus one half times two is one, and then we'll get the square root of one minus x squared plus our constant of integration. It's fine if you'd like to keep it in terms of rational exponents. All right, excellent, excellent. Okay. Here's the next part, the not so easy integration by parts problems. Uh, but like I said, we'll get through them when you don't have a transcendental factor. You need to play around with the integrand. That's the stuff that's in the integral. Oftentimes it works out to let you be the factor whose derivative is simpler, is a simpler factor than u itself. Then dv would be the more complicated remaining factor. I always use pencil or my tablet that I can erase or undo. <laughs> There's a lot of trial and error, especially at first, but you got this. Now remember, dv always includes dx or whatever d, whatever your, your independent variable is that's, you know, that you're integrating with respect to. Cool, cool? All right, so now here we go. Let's rewrite this one as 6x times e to the negative 7x dx. And so here, when I look at this one, 6x is a lot easier, uh, like a more simple factor, and its derivative is even more simple. So if u is 6x, du would just be 6 times dx. I was also noticing that 
e to the negative 7x dx, which is what our v will equal to, is something that is able to be integrated. You do need to have a negative 7 to do that, so you'll have to multiply by negative 1 7 to balance. And then integrate, integrate, you'll have, sorry, this was dv, you'll have v equals negative 1 7 e to the negative 7x. Cool, cool? All right, so let's see what we've got. So the integral of 6x e to the negative 7x dx equals u, which was 6x, times v, which is negative 1 7 e to the negative 7x, minus the integral of v, negative 1 7 e to the negative 7x, and then du, which was just 6 times dx, All right, so now we will have, we'll have negative 6x e to the negative 7x over 7. Plus one seventh times the integral of e to the negative seven x, and I'm going to bring the six with that seven, the six that's with the dx. And remember, I needed a negative seven in order to integrate, so I need to balance it by negative one seventh. So the integral of 6 times x times e to the negative 7x with respect to x will be negative 6xe to the negative 7x over 7 minus 6 over 49 times e to the negative 7x plus our constant of integration Might as well pretty this one up a bit. 6x, integral 6xe to the negative 7x with respect to x will be. If I factor out a negative 6 over 49 times e to the negative 7x, I'll be left with 7x plus 1 and then I'll have my constant of integration, and we're all done. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> all right, remember, take a break if you need to, stretch your legs, roll your shoulders around. All right, so if you watch the warm-up portion, um, this is the one that we had simplified a bit, gotten, you know, in one happy fraction. So here, We're going to let u equal 2x, so our du will equal 2dx, and then our v is going to be, our dv rather, will be the quantity 5 minus x to the 1 half dx. So what do I need? I need a negative 1, right? I need a negative to have my, I need to multiply the inside by a negative to have my g prime. So I'll multiply the outside by a negative as well. And then I'll integrate both sides. We'll get v is equal to negative two-thirds quantity 5 minus x to the 
three halves. Good so far? Awesome. All right, so now let's, uh, let's do it. The integral of x times square root of five minus x with respect to x equals u, which was x, times v, which is negative two-thirds times five minus x to the three-halves, and then minus the integral of v, negative two-thirds, five minus x to the three-halves times dx. That was my du. All right. So, it's working out, my friends. Let's see what we got. We got negative 2x over 3 times 5 minus x to the 3 halves. I'm going to keep the negative inside but pull out the 2 thirds. That negative will allow us to integrate. And then once we integrate, we'll have a multiplier of 2 fifths and our 5 minus x is going to be raised to the 5 halves plus our constant of integration. So now let's do this. We've got 15 already in our denominator there. If I multiply by 5 over 5, I'll have it set on the first term. So the integral of x times root 5 minus x with respect to x equals. So we have in common 2 over 15 and then we have the 5 minus x to the 3 halves and then what's left in the first one will be a 5x and then we'll have let's see and then I'm looking at my signs they're both negative, so I'll pull that negative out. And then we'll have two minus two times five minus x to the two halves, which is just one. And then plus our constant of integration. But my apologies, it won't be minus anymore, it will be plus because I pulled the negative out from them both. So that's going to give us the integral of root 5 minus x with respect to x equals negative 2 times 5 minus x to the 3 halves. Do you see up here we'll have 5x plus 10 minus 2x's. That's going to give us 10 plus 3x, which is what we got in our warm-up member, and that's all over 15, plus our constant of integration. Isn't that groovy? So you can do that problem either way using a u substitution, dun, 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 which we did way back here. This is when we did all that magic to this guy. That was with a u substitution and then writing x in terms of u, so it was a little tricky. And then over here, doing integration by parts. All right, so how it works part three. Guess what we get to do now? We get to use integration by parts multiple times. So IBP is integration by parts. Sometimes you need to use integration by parts multiple times. You may even need to combine like intervals, which is why I've been rewriting the original integral every time. So let's take a look at this one. So what you want to notice here is that 
both of them could be the USUB or could be the DV, right? Um, they're gonna f the the cosine uh, factor will flip flop between cosine and sine. So let's let our first u u one equal to cosine at three x. Our first du will be negative three times sine at three x. Don't forget the multiplier to the angle. Now dv will equal to e to the negative x dx. And when we integrate, remember, we want to have a negative to um, balance out that negative x. So we have to have it balanced. All right. So v ends up being e to the negative x. Always so nice. And that was our dv1 and our v1. And our dx1. Well, you don't have to go that far. Excellent. All right. So here we go. First part, e to the negative x times cosine of 3x with respect to x equals u times v. I'm going to move a little faster here. Um, it'll look nicer if I do the v first. So e to the negative x times cosine at 3x and then we'll have minus a my this um, we'll have I didn't write this as a negative my bad we have a negative e to the negative x and then minus a minus is going to be plus right now I'll write it all out so we'll have minus the integral of negative e to the negative x and then our du1 was negative 3 sine at 3x dx, my bad. Good so far? Alright, let's uh, clean that up a little bit. So we have the integral of e to the negative x times cosine at 3x dx equals e to the negative x times cosine at 3x. Be careful of your signs. We have minus a minus a minus, and we also have a 3 as a multiplier. So 3 minuses is a minus, and then we have a 3 times the integral of e to the negative x times sine at 3x dx. So now u2 will equal to sine at 3x. So our du2 will be 3 times cosine at 3x. Now v2 will be e to the negative x again. And then with dx, and then integrating, integrating, we'll get the same integral, won't we? Negative e to the negative x. Excellent. <laughs> no pun intended, right? All right, so the integral of e to the negative x cosine at 3x dx equals e to the negative x times cosine at 3x minus 3 times, now we're going to do the whole thing again, u times u2 times v2. So we'll have, and you know what I realized I needed to fix? This had to be negative, didn't it? So this would be negative as would this. All right, and then we have negative e to the negative x times sine at 3x minus the integral of v, which is negative e to the negative x, times du, which is 3 cosine 3x dx. 
So that was our first one. This is our second one. Excellent. All right, so cleaning that up a bit, we have the, the integral of e to the negative x times cosine at 3x times dx equals negative e to the negative x times cosine at 3x. Now, let's see what we've got. I'm going to get these minuses squared away. So, and I'm going to distribute, I'm basically going to distribute the negative 3, okay? So I'll have plus 3e to the negative x times sine at 3x when I distribute to the first. And then when I go to the second, it will stay negative because there's three negatives. And then we have our 3 as well, sorry. Actually, my bad. Holy moly. Let's just erase this. Okay, we have our, our negative is fine, but we're going to have the 3 times the 3 from our du2. So that's going to be 9 times the integral of e to the negative x cosine at 3x dx. That probably looks familiar, right? So we basically have like terms. Do you see that? We have like a 1 of these integrals here, and we have 9 of them here. So we're going to add 9 to the other side to get 10 of these integrals of e to the negative x times cosine at 3x dx. All right, so I just combined like integrals. That's equal to if I factor out and e to the negative x and switch the first two terms, I'll have 3 times sine at 3x minus cosine at 3x. And then what else would I have to do? What's And then, you know, you've got your constant of integration. But I need one of these integrals, so I have to divide by 10. So I'll have e to the negative x cosine at 3x dx equals 1 tenth e to the negative x times 3 sine at 3x minus cosine at 3x. And dividing a constant by 10, I'll just get another constant. And so we're all done. So there you have it, integration by parts, using it twice. So here's another one that um, we're going to have to, it won't be quite as complicated, but we'll have to, I'm looking here at the x squared. So what that one's telling me is that if u is equal to x squared, I'll call it u1 is x squared, du1 is 2x. I'm going to need to do another integration by parts, right? Um, so that's okay. We'll just, we'll just keep it going. dv1 will be e to the negative x. We've had some good practice with that times dx. Integrate, integrate. v1 will be negative e to the negative x. So we'll have the integral of x squared times e to the negative x dx will equal to u times v, so x squared times negative e to the negative x minus the integral of v1, which was negative e to the negative x. And then, uh, I keep forgetting my dx, sorry guys, 2x dx. So we'll have 2x dx here. It's really bad to do that, so um, I will not do that the rest of the video. Okay, so cleaning it up a bit, we'll have x squared e to the negative x times dx equals. We'll have negative 
x squared e to the negative x plus 2 times the integral of x e to the negative x dx. And so du2 is equal to dx. And then dv2 is equal to e to the negative x dx. So integrate, integrate, v2 will be negative e to the negative x. Continuing, we'll have the integral of x squared e to the negative x dx equals negative x squared e to the negative x plus 2 times. Now we're going into our second integration by parts. So our u is x and our u2 is x and our v2 is, oh I did it in the wrong color, my bad. We usually do it in purple. Uh, negative e to the negative x. And then minus the integral of negative e to the negative x for my v. And then my second du was just dx. Alrighty, and that closes that bracket. So let's see what we have. x squared e to the negative x dx equals negative x squared e to the negative x plus, oops, I'm going to distribute the two, so minus 2x e to the negative x. And then it'll be a minus 2 integral negative e to the negative x dx. So we'll have integral x squared e to the negative x dx equals negative x squared e to the negative x minus 2x e to the negative x minus 2 times e to the negative x, because I kept the negative in there, plus our constant of integration. And we can factor out an e to the negative x, make it a little prettier, and a minus. So I'm going to factor out minus e to the minus x. We'll be left with x squared plus 2x's minus 2 plus our constant of integration. How's it going? <laughs> if you're having trouble keeping your, um, your signs, S-I-G-N-S, -S, squared away, then, oh, I factored out a negative, so this should be plus, my bad. Then that's okay. <laughs> it's typical. There's, um, this method called the Tanzelin, um, also known as the tabular method, and it's a way to keep you organized. So the tabular method is a way of organizing an integration by parts problem. We set up a column for u and its derivatives. And um, also for dv and its antiderivatives. And um, so basically this is kind of how it works in general. I know it looks really ugly and but but you you multiply f of x times your integral of g of x dx and then you apply this sign and then you get a result here. Now, 
you go again so it's kind of at a diagonal you apply that sign put result here you put the result there you and then this guy sorry I should have put dx squared right here it ends up going you know getting more and more complicated right so then you would keep going you put that result here it just gets needlessly messy and then this one is just going to zero out uh, this one if you want you could put times dx to the n I think it is and then uh, this one will end up being zero because you'll you'll get a zero all right so the last one that we did if we did that that tabular method right it would be really easy to keep to keep track of you'd have your u equal to x squared right you have your dv equal to e to the negative x and then you have your signs So, actually I should move it over. All right, so here we go. And you have your products. Okay, so the first one, it remember it kind of your very first you um, was x squared and our very first dv was e to the negative x dx, right? So I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that. So you have your, you, you would end up with your negative e to the negative x, right? This first sign is positive. And you don't start it, you go you go a little lower. So let me get the some call some rows in, okay? So here we go. You your very first one, you and then you just do your U's until they zero out. So you get U is X squared, and then what? If you differentiate, you would get two X. Differentiate again and you get two. The last one would be zero. This one, your next integral is going to be e to the negative x. You got to keep going down because you are going to multiply it to the 2, so you'll get negative e to the negative x for the next integral. Our signs, you start positive, minus, you alternate. So then let's see what our products are. So here we go. I'll write these in black. So you go here and then across. And so we would get the you keep the sign the same. So you'd end up with negative x squared e to the negative x squared. Or no, e to the negative x for your first term. And let's see what we got. Look at that. Negative x squared e to the negative x, right? And then you'd keep going until you get down to the zero one. So this one will flip the sign. So we'll have minus 2x e to the negative x. And then this one we don't need to flip the sign. And so we'll end up with minus 2e to the negative x. Then you just add them together. And add your constant of integration. So negative x squared e to the negative x minus 2x e to the negative x minus 2e to the negative x plus c and then factoring out a negative e to the negative x we'd have x squared plus 2x plus 2 plus c just what we got before but with you know, a lot less complication in our brain, right? 
Okay, so this one, we'd have to use it quite a few times, right? I mean, we had to use this one quite a bit uh, with a squared term. So here we go. Our u this time is 3x to the fourth. Our dv, do the purple. Our dv would be um, cosine 2x dx. I can move that closer. And then we would have our signs and products. And I don't know how many columns we're going to need, so I'm going to just differentiate till I get zero. So we'll have 12x cubed, 36x squared, 72x, 72, and then finally zero. All right, so our first antiderivative is going to be, let's see, positive one half sine 2x negative one-fourth cosine 2x and then negative one-eighth sine 2x and then we'll get positive one-sixteenth. Don't get confused that when you integrate the sine function, remember it's negative. So we'll get positive one sixteenth cosine two x. And then finally, one over thirty two sine two x. All right, we start positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And let's see what we get for our products. So Remember, we're going like this. So the first one will get three, three x to the fourth over two times sine two x. Good so far? Good. All right, now 12 x cubed times negative a quarter cosine two x but then we flip the sign so it'll turn positive. We'll just get three x cubed cosine two x. And then lining these guys up, let's see, four divides both of those, right? And so I believe, and then we'll, we'll have a negative, so we'll have negative nine halves sine two x all right eight divide seventy two and sixteen so we'll end up with and then we need to flip the sign so we'll end up with negative nine halves again and then cosine two x And then we have 72 times 1 over 32. We don't flip the sign. So we'll get, uh, let's see, for sure 8 divides both. So that would be 9 quarters, I believe, times sine at 2x. Whew, that was crazy, huh? All right, so this guy will equal to, I'm just going to write equals over here because I don't think I'll fit the whole thing anyway. So we'll have 3 x to the fourth over, nope, yeah, over 2. And then times sine 2x plus 3 x cubed times cosine 2x minus 9 halves and I missed my x. That's an x squared 
this one has an x. 9 halves x squared sine 2x. minus 9 halves x cosine 2x plus 9 quarters sine 2x plus our constant of integration. So that one would have been really hard to keep track of in the regular manner, right? All right, excellent. Okay, so guidelines for integrals requiring integration by parts. Let u equal any logarithmic or inverse trigonometric factor. Second strategy, let u equal x to some power where n isn't, where it's not going to get more complicated. n is basically like a natural number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let u equal e to the ax, where a is a constant. So the natural exponential function is raised to a linear function of x. Now, when you have the integral of e, to the ax times cosine bx with respect to x, or the integral of e to the ax sine at bx with respect to x, you switch it up. You let dv equal e to the ax dx, and you let u equal either cosine bx or you let u equal sine bx, whichever one you've got. So it might have been a little confusing for you on this one because we were integrating the trig function, which is why we got all those fractions, right? And this other one that we had done before, way back here, that was our u. So we were multiplying by the a and the angle, okay? All right. To evaluate a definite integral, first find the indefinite integral <laughs> and then back substitute. All right? So this one, um, my bad, it was a typo. And this video, honestly, is going to be long enough. So typo, skip. So we'll go here. We've got the integral from x is 0 to x is 1 of x times arc sine at x squared with respect to x. So this one's a little bit tricky, okay, because we have to kind of like change it up. So I'm going to first let t equal to x squared. This is not for integration by parts. This is so we can so we can do the integral. And so using integration by parts. So dt will equal to 2x dx. Good so far. And so we're going to have to adjust this integral in order to get our everything for our dt. We need to adjust it by 2, so we'll have to multiply by a half. Good so far? So, since we've done all this work to change it up, I'm going to go ahead and change the limits of integration so that they're in terms of t, all right? So, t at 0 Remember, t was x squared. It's just going to be 0 squared, which is 0. That's the lower limit. t at 1 is 1 squared. So the, the limits of integration stay the same. So we're going to start working with the integral, 1, one half times the integral from 0 to 1 of arc sine at t dt. 
we are working with the integral, indefinite integral, arc sine at t dt. So u, remember, has to be equal to the inverse trig function. Remember how happy we are about that now? <laughs> and so du is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus t squared. Now dv is just dx. That's all that's left. Or dt, my bad. That's all that's left. Integrating both sides, we get v equals t. And so the integral of arc sine at t dt is equal to u times v. So arc sine at t. I'm going to put the t in the front to make it prettier for the v. Minus the integral of t times du. Whoops, oh, I promised I wouldn't do that. We've got dt over root 1 minus t squared. So remember that that would be 1 minus t squared to the negative 1 half, and then we have our dt. All right, so in order to have my g prime doing my pattern recognition, I'm going to need to have a negative 2 times t, right? Because I have 1 minus t squared inside that negative one-half power. And so to balance it out, I'm going to put, uh, I'll change that sign to a plus and multiply by a half. So then we're going to get the integral of arc sine at t dt is equal to t times arc sine at t plus one-half times two square root, positive one half, one minus t squared. So the twos will divide out. And then I will have one half times the integral from zero to one of arc sine at t dt equals one half times. I'm going to put the result I got here. So we got t times arc sine at t plus the square root of 1 minus t squared. And that's from t is 0 to t is 1 since we, sorry, my husband's doing some yard work or something. t is 0 to t is 1 since we had already changed the limits of integration. And then we will get one half times one times arc sine at one plus the square root of one minus one squared for the upper limit of integration minus zero arc sine zero plus the square root of one minus zero squared. which gives us one half times. So this guy will be zero, this will be zero, this guy is pi over four, and this is gonna be one. So we'll get pi over four minus one, and then bringing out a quarter, we'll have one eighth, times pi minus four. And we're all good. How'd you do? Awesome. I knew you could do it. Okay, next up some, <laughs> these are hard. I, I, you know, there's just no getting around it. This one's hard. Um, the good news is this is the last one of the section. So, Here's the trick, okay? When you have something like this, when something like this comes up, your U is going to be 
you'll have the e to the x squared. You pick the same power of x that's in the, the exponent of the natural exponential. Because then when you get your du, you'll have x squared times 2x e to the x squared plus 2x, differentiating the first one, times e to the x squared, all times dx. So your du will be, you can factor out the 2x e to the x squared you're going to be left with x squared plus 1 and times dx. So that's nice because that's what's in the denominator, right? Okay, so now here we go. Our dv has to be what's left, right? So how many factors of x do we have left? We have, oh, and also this is super important. I miswrote, I have a typo, this should have been squared, the denominator. So, dv is going to be x times x squared plus 1 to the negative 2 dx. So, we need a 2, right? So we'll have to multiply by a half, and then we integrate, integrate, and let's see what shakes out. We'll get v equals one half times x squared plus one to the negative one over negative one. So v equals one over two times quantity x squared plus 1. And it's negative. And yes, I have my 2. All right, so let's do it. The integral x cubed e to the x squared over quantity x squared plus 1 squared with respect to x equals u times v so u was x squared e to the x squared. V is negative 1 over 2 times x squared plus 1. And then we'll have minus the integral of v, which is negative 1 over 2 times x squared plus 1 times du, which is 2x e to the x squared times x squared plus 1, see how that works out, times dx. All right. So let's do this. The integral of x cubed e to the x squared over quantity x squared plus 1 squared with respect to x equals x squared e to the x squared minus, or times, I'm sorry, so it'll be a negative over 2 times x squared plus 1. Minus a minus is plus. Let's see what else we have. Let's uh, clean this up. These 2's divide out. But you know what? You'll need the 2 for the integration. But we certainly can divide out the x squared plus 1, right? And so we'll have minus a minus is plus the integral of, and I'll bring out this little 2 as a 1 half, and we'll have 2x e to the x squared dx in our integral. 
So the integral of x cubed e to the x squared over quantity x squared plus 1 squared equals negative x squared e to the x squared over 2 times x squared plus 1 plus 1 half e to the x squared plus our constant of integration. Now this is one of the ones where it's better to simplify and you'll see. So our integral will equal 2. So here this one is missing. I need an x squared plus 1 so I have to multiply by x squared plus 1 on top as well and so then I will have negative x squared e to the x squared plus positive x squared e to the x squared I'm distributing the e to the x squared through on the second term plus e to the x squared all over 2 times quantity x squared plus 1 plus our constant of integration. So the first two terms zero out and finally we will get e to the x squared over 2 times x squared plus 1 plus our constant of integration. Oh, right. Wow, that was, a, that was a long one. I'm sorry about that. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you're watching this show. And if you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button, share the video, and like the video. Bye.